All right, we're going to go over some features of the outer ear as well as the middle ear on model 16A. So the external ear is really familiar to everyone here, but we're going to introduce really three new terms, the pinna, the lobule, and the external acoustic canal. So the pinna is really what you think of as the upper regions of your ear, and this is actually what's funneling sound into your ear. The lower region we know is the earlobe is also called the lobule of the ear. Either term is accepted for this class, so don't worry about it. And the third term for the outer ear here is this external acoustic meatus, or external acoustic canal. Again, either term is acceptable there. And it's this canal that actually leads to the very last or most internal feature of the outer ear, and that's the eardrum. And so that eardrum is actually receiving that sound, but just to be clear, the eardrum is actually part of the outer ear, but it's the last feature. Anything behind the eardrum, that's what you actually get into the middle ear. So we'll move it to this view. So as we get into the middle ear, this is where you're going to find the ear ossicles. And ossicle just means very small bone. And these are, in fact, the smallest bones in your body. They're kind of hard to see on this model from this perspective. So I'll show you the ones that are actually held in plastic. And these are, from left to right, they're called the malleus, incus, and stapes. Malleus means mallet, incus means anvil, and stapes means stirrup. So they're named for essentially what they look like. And they're very, very small bones, and these are actually connected to the eardrum, and they connect to the inner ear as well. But they are actually reside within the tympanic cavity, which is the open space of the middle ear. The last feature of the inner ear that you can see real clearly here is what's called, well, it has a ton of different names, but it's known often as the eustachian tube, or the auditory tube, or the pharyngotympanic tube. Any of those terms are accepted, but this is just a tube that connects the middle ear to your nasopharynx, so actually to the back of your mouth, essentially. And its main function here is to equalize the pressure that is the pressure of the air that is in your middle ear and make that pressure equal to your outer ear. Because if the pressure isn't equal, you're going to have a constant force from one direction or the other on your, on your eardrum, essentially, and we all know this feeling. As you go up in an airplane, the pressure in your external auditory canal drops because you're going up in altitude. And so that, makes, that means the pressure behind the eardrum is greater than the pressure outside of the eardrum, and so you're going to feel this pressure. And so what you do when that happens is you gulp, or you actually use the muscles of your pharynx to open up this end of your eustachian tube and allow air from your mouth, which came from the atmosphere, that air moves in to the middle ear and then the pressure becomes equal. So if you never pop your ears, you never allow air to move in through this eustachian tube, then you'll always feel that dull pressure and it'll actually make you not hear as well because this eardrum won't be able to vibrate as easily back and forth because of the increased pressure in your middle ear. So that's pretty much it for this model in terms of the outer and middle ear. Pretty straightforward. It's a little bit more complicated and a little harder to see as we move into the inner ear, but we'll deal with that in a different video. Thanks.